Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I'm back today with an art haul unboxing. This is quite exciting because it contains everything I've purchased throughout the month of October and I've basically been placing smaller orders with Jackson's whenever some affiliate credit becomes available and um, I've opened them up and I've condensed them into a couple of these boxes so we have a couple of these to open and have a look at all the exciting new art supplies. But um, yes, I asked you actually on a poll whether you would like me to film this video or whether you would like a swatching video of every Payne's Grey art supply I own, which was actually a video suggested by one of my subscribers. So what I did is I've actually filmed both of them. The Payne's Grey, which didn't win the poll, I guess that's more of a specialised video really, <laughs> slightly nerdy <laughs> because we really look in depth at lots of different Payne's Greys and how they differ from each other. It's actually really interesting and I loved filming it, but I filmed it for my upcoming Patreon, so I'll let you know when that's launched. Um, I'm just adding content at the moment to that so that there's lots for you to look at when you join up. So yeah, I filmed that one because it didn't win the poll. I think this video got about 20, sorry, 75% of the votes and the Payne's Grey video got 25%. So we're going with this one. You wanted to see an art haul, so that's what you've got. By the way, I'm wearing a super scruffy and holy, I don't know whether you can see that, can you? Yeah, <laughs> my holy art cardigan. Um, because I've been doing a lot of work in acrylic, um, lots of canvas paintings this week, so um, I have to just wear my scruffy clothes because I make a lot of mess. Okay, so let's start with this little box. Got some interesting things in here. So <laughs> I did actually buy some more Neo colours. Um, as you can see, the majority of them are in greens because I'm getting really into using green so much, it's rapidly becoming like I think my favorite color to work with at the moment. Greens and grays I'm absolutely loving. So I decided to get a few of these. Why won't this box open? It doesn't want to stay. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna have to sort this out. Okay, hopefully that will stay there now. I just had to move the paintbrush pot out of the way. So we're on the desk here. Okay, so here we have, um, in fact, a couple of these were recommended to me. We have a Neo Color 1 and a Neo Color 2. So the Neo Color 1 is um, not water soluble and the Neo Color 2 is, and they're both in light olive. But if you can see that, you can see they're slightly different. Now, Christiana of um, the channel Crixis recommended this green to me because it's beautiful yellowy green, which is what I was looking for. Um, and I, I can't remember whether she said to buy Neo Colour 1 or 2, so I got both of them <laughs> and um, they do look slightly different. So what we're going to do is we're going to be swatching these, but I think we're going to be swatching in a separate video because there's a lot to swatch. So I'm going to unbox and show you everything in this video and then there'll be another one coming up um, probably the day after where I'm swatching. Um, so yeah, we'll have a look at all of these then. So I have two more Neo Color 2s, the water soluble ones. One is in chromium oxide green and the other is in moss green. Beautiful shades of green, they'll look really good with that yellowish green as well, I think. Another Neo Color 2 in night blue. Really like the name of that one. I was just attracted by the name and I love dark blues, so got that. And also a sepia because sepia is a colour I use quite often. I find it quite versatile, a bit like Payne's Grey. <laughs> so um, yeah, we just have a few more Neo colours to add to my small collection. Unfortunately, the tin I got for my Neo colours to go in, um, I didn't think I was gonna have many more and it's already full. So I think what I might have to do is use this tin for something else. Um, I have several things I could use it for, but I'm going to get something else to store the Neo Colour crayons in. Right, let's have a look at the pencils. Some really interesting looking ones in here. This is quite exciting because having bought these over the course of a month and not really looked at them or used them, it's kind of like 
seeing them for the first time. <laughs> I'm always adding to my coloured pencil collection and some of you give me really good um, suggestions for colours as well. So this time I have the Holbein Artist Colour Pencil in Ash Rose. It's a really pretty colour. Autumn Leaf, perfect for this time of year. Um, and this is my first Karen Dash Pablo pencil. I haven't tried these before, so this is a new range for me. Um, this one is Ash Grey. This is really pale. Really looking forward to swatching these. I'm obsessed with coloured pencils at the moment. Um, and I have another Pablo pencil in Night Blue. So I have two different Night Blues. It'll be interesting to see whether they are in fact the same colour across the different mediums. And I've added some more Derwent Light Fast because I'm really loving these at the moment. So we have Olive Earth, Foliage and Blue Violet. I think these are not the only pencils I have in this art hall by the way. Actually we do in fact have even more pencils over here. Um, these are the Rembrandt Polycolor pencils. Now somebody I think recommended these to me, one of my subscribers, so I went to Jackson's to check them out and I saw that they had this tin of 12 and they are all in, if I can hold that up a bit closer so you can see it, different shades of grey. So we have lots of cool greys and warm greys and so I'm really interested in trying these. I've never tried the polycolour pencils before and I really like the idea of having lots of different shades of grey. So they looked really good. I thought they looked really interesting. So a nice addition to my pencil collection. So we'll be swatching those as well. So let's have a look at what's in this big package here. This is something I've been wanting to try for ages now. I've known about it for quite a while, but just never got around to buying some. It's the Triart Sludge, <laughs> such a funny name, acrylic, and this is the thick version. And it says on the side here that Triart Sludge Thick is made from 100% recycled pigments harvested from our washing process. Use it as an economical alternative to gesso when a darker base is required or as a neutral colour extender. Become a sludge head and enjoy the satisfaction of helping the environment. So obviously it's a slightly more environmentally sound acrylic because they're using like a waste product to create something and I'm loving this colour. I don't know whether we can actually... I don't know whether this is going to be sealed. Oh, it is going to be sealed. We'll take that off when we swatch. I will actually swatch this out for you in the next video. But I don't know whether you can see on camera, it's a gorgeous sort of greenish, blue, tealy kind of colour, very muted and gorgeous. So I would actually use that colour just as a colour, <laughs> um, although they're saying you can use it in many different ways. But I believe because the colours vary slightly, they have batch numbers rather than specific colours, because I guess it's hard when you're using like a waste product to get... Um, like exactly the same colour each time. But it'd be interesting to try that. By the way, the lighting keeps changing. We have a very changeable weather kind of day. So sometimes this is looking a bit washed out. I'm trying my best, I've got the filming light on, but um, it's only evening it out so much. Um, yeah, I wanted to get this colour, parchment, because I have um, the Liquitex acrylic marker pen in the parchment colour but I'd never bought the paint and I think it's such a nice neutral colour. So um, I got that and then while I was in that section of the Jackson's website I saw light pink and indanthrin blue as well and thought they're really nice colours that I would probably use a lot in my work so I got those as well. I do have a few Liquitex acrylics anyway and really like them so I already know I like this brand. And this one is just because I needed a big acrylic gouache. This is the Holbein Acrylic Gouache in titanium white. I always get through so much black and white. Um, the black I choose is the lamp black. Um, and I tend to go for titanium white if I can. I like it more than the Chinese white in the acrylic gouache. So I got a big one of those because 
As I say, I always find that I need so much white when I'm working with gouache. And lastly, this is something new for me to try. This is the Golden High Flow Acrylic. And I thought that this might be good. Um, I got one in titanium white because I wanted it to do like little highlights and details on my canvas paintings. So when I'm working in acrylic, just to have something that's a little bit more, you can hear that, it's really liquid. <laughs> so it's a lot more flowy. Um, so it'd be nice to try that. And finally in this box, oh, this one's rattling a bit. Oh, we have lots of little things in here. So we have three more Molotow acrylic markers. And this time I decided to get, because I'm loving working with these, so I'm adding to my colour palette, hazelnut brown, Sahara beige pastel, and grey blue dark. Really lovely colours. So we'll be swatching those as well later. Um, the other pens I have in here are <laughs> some more greens, unsurprisingly. So I love working with the Faber-Castell Pitt Artist brush pens um, and decided to get two greens. So I got chromium green opaque and may green. So one very fresh looking green and one much more neutral, slightly muted looking, which is really nice. And then one more Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura watercolour marker. I have a few of these now and I really love working with them. They're great for taking with you on location if you want to go out sketching. They're a great way of taking some watercolour with you. Um, and they have a double end. So you have one end with the brush pen and one end with the bullet tip. Um, so yeah, I decided to get a dark grey because I use a lot of grey in my work and I thought that might be quite useful. And so the other paints we have in here, I've wanted these for the longest time <laughs> and I, for some reason had never bought them. I have the Ash Blue and the Ash Green um, Holbein Acrylic Gouache and they're some of my favourite colours so I decided to get the Ash Rose and the Ash Yellow. They're basically just very muted, gorgeous, soft colours. Um, really excited to try those. As I say, I've had these on my wish list for a while now. And as I'm really using acrylic gouache a lot at the moment, I'm really into using it again. I thought now was the time to get them. And as you may know, I've recently got into using the Turner Acryl Gouache as well. So I have a few of these. Um, these are just the normal range, but I have quite a lot of the Japanese range. I bought a big set of those the other month, but I've added just a few of the regular range. Um, and this one is fresh green, so lovely zingy green colour. We're on to the second box now, so let's open this big one. So this is another version of the Triart Sludge Acrylic. This is the thin version. So I'm guessing, yeah, that that's more of a sort of high flow, um, thinner consistency than the other one. And this comes in this very neutral, sort of almost cappuccino kind of color, which will be really useful to have, even if it's just for kind of a base coat or something like that but as I tend to use a lot of these um, very soft, gentle colours, I think this one will come in very handy. So we'll give that a swatch later as well. It's acrylic that comes in this funny little pouch. Um, I don't really know what the point of that is. I think maybe it's if you're refilling something, maybe if you're filling those marker pens perhaps that you can um, use if you're making your own, um, <laughs> I don't know whether you know what I mean, <laughs> does anyone know what I mean? Those big thick marker pens that you can use um, that have a sponge tip, I don't know whether it's for those um, or whether it's just so that you can have less wastage, I don't know. But anyway this wasn't very expensive, it's a Sennelier one, um, it's in burnt green earth which is this lovely dark green colour so thought that I'd definitely use that at the moment with all of my new green landscapes that I'm working on. 
So I just thought I'd give that a try. I was curious and uh, I don't know why it's called abstract innovative acrylic. We will find out more. So let's move on to this little box here. And I have two Holbein. This is the traditional gouache, not the acrylic gouache. And I have a really dark grey, grey number three, and ash blue. As I said to you earlier, I love, let's see if I can open these without it going everywhere. I love their ash blue. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Um, in their acrylic gouache. So I thought I would get one in their regular gouache as well. Um, so I look forward to using that because it's a colour I use a lot. And this dark grey is gorgeous. Really lovely charcoal kind of grey. Very, very nice. Uh -huh, I was wondering what was in here. I couldn't remember what was in this box. Two more acrylic inks. So I use FW acrylic ink a lot. It has a habit of separating like that. I'm going to shake it up so you can have an idea of what it actually looks like. There, that's better. <laughs> I don't know why it separates so much. You have to make sure you shake them really well before you use them. Um, but I got, what's this colour? It's called Peach Pink. And I thought that looked like a really pretty colour. So I got that one. And this one is olive green. It doesn't look olive green there. It looks very bright. But we'll give it a shake. <laughs> and you can see it's a little bit more subtle now. Still quite a bright olive green though, so it'll be interesting to see those swatched out, see whether they are actually as bright as they appear, um, whether they look a little bit more subtle. But I really like these inks. Um, I use the white one all the time in my work. It's actually really nice leaving all of these um, smaller orders and just unboxing them all in one go. It really does feel like Christmas. <laughs> It's really fun because I've kind of forgotten um, until I see them again what I'd ordered. So this was something that has been out of stock on Jackson's for I think the majority of this year <laughs> because I've had this on my wish list for so long and I keep checking back to see whether it's back in stock again and it never was until suddenly the other week it was. So it's the Winsor & Newton Professional Acrylic in Potter's Pink. I don't have a Potter's Pink acrylic. I love the watercolour version. So I'm really happy to now have the acrylic version as well. And then here, this is a new paint for me. This is the Shinhan Pass Linden Green. Um, this is a hybrid of watercolour and gouache. So it'd be very interesting to swatch that and see what we can do with it. I'm guessing it's probably pretty opaque when you apply it thickly, but you can wash it out so that it looks much more like watercolour. So yeah, it just says on the back, hybrid of watercolour and gouache. And yeah, this is a new brand for me and I'm really curious about this paint. I would like to get some other colours, but they're out of stock of a lot of colours at the moment. So I've got this really fresh looking green. Shall we have a look, actually, and just see? Ooh, it's really bright, look at that. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what that looks like on the paper. So I'm tempted to go for this box down here. Ah, yes, I remember these. More gorgeous greens, by the way. Make sure we pop that just down there. So these are also Shinhan, I think. Yeah, Shinhan Professional Designers Gouache. Now, Jackson's um, announced that they had started stocking these the other week and they had them on a special offer. So I got um, Moss Green, Shadow Green Pale, that's a great name, and Dark Green. So these are just a traditional gouache. They're not acrylic gouache. Um, and I'm building up my traditional gouache collection as well at the moment. Um, I've been adding to that quite a lot this year. 
And yeah, beautiful greens, love that trio. So I'm guessing in here, unsurprisingly, we have more pencils. Those gorgeous colours. <laughs> there are some more greens, that's a shock, isn't it? <laughs> are you surprised at that? Um, <laughs> I think I'm just determined to get every green in existence at the moment. Okay, so this is my first Albrechtura watercolour pencil. This is by Faber-Castell and this is the Earth Green. Now, after I mentioned that I have, I think, three different products of theirs that are in this gorgeous Earth Green, someone said um, that they loved this pencil, the Albrechtura one, and that I should possibly try it because it was one of their favorites and it was the one that they measure all other Earth Greens against or something. So curious, <laughs> I decided to buy it. Um, and this is another Pablo pencil. So this is my third Pablo pencil in this haul and ever, in fact. This is the Light Olive. That's a really pretty yellow green. Um, Sky Mist, now I forget where I heard about this one. I think maybe one of my subscribers, but they suggested it as a beautiful blue, so I got that and Misty Green, the Holbein Artist Coloured Pencil. Misty Green is another one of my favourite colours in their acrylic gouache range, so naturally I had to have the pencil as well. So we're getting down to the last few now. I have a couple of little boxes of pencils here. You can tell all of these came in so many smaller orders, can't you, from the way everything's boxed up. Um, we have a whole by Artist coloured pencil in forest green. That's one that's been on my wish list for a while. Beautiful dark green. And this one in olive yellow. There's a real theme here, isn't there, amongst <laughs> the um, art materials. There are so many greens. Let's see, how do I open this one? Oh, these are pretty colours. Look at that trio in there. So these are all, are they all Pablos? I think they are. Right, so we have six Pablos now. So I've got a greyish black, which kind of looked like a Payne's Grey to me. Um, granite Rose, gorgeous name, gorgeous soft pink colour. And Bluish Pale which just looks so pretty. Look at those together. I'm loving that trio as well. It's like there are loads of little mini palettes within um, these art materials, like little mini color palettes. But yeah, really pretty. And finally in here we have, you can see paint on my cardi there. We have the Faber-Castell Pit Graphite Matte Pencils. I was really excited when I found out about these. I think they're quite a new thing. Um, they were wrapped in plastic, which said world first on it or something. Um, but I took it off because I got excited and wanted to look at them. As you can see, I haven't used them. So I'm gonna swatch them for the first time with you. But they're actually graphite pencils that don't have any shine to them. So they're just matte. Um, I am super intrigued by these pencils. One of the things I don't like about graphite is that it's shiny. So I'm really excited to think that I may have found some matte pencils. So we have six in here and they range from 2B um, to 4B, 6B, 8B, 10B and 12B. So yeah, we're going to have fun trying those. Really like this tin that they come in as well. Everything by Faber-Castell always feels like it's such nice quality. So finally, I have these two bags from Amazon. I think these are sometimes called stuff bags. I do actually have one that is just like this. It's this size, I've had it for absolutely years. I bought it from an art shop when I was in Paris about maybe eight years ago, something like that, and it's still going strong. And I love them for when you need to travel with your art materials and you need a super strong bag because they have this kind of mesh stuff in them <laughs> and that kind of makes them really strong and 
Um, if you've got things that you're worried about, say for example, tubes of paint or something, you're worried about perhaps them um, opening or spilling out or whatever, or if you have pens that you're worried about, you can pop them in here and then in your main bag and you know that they're going to be safe. Um, and if they did spill out, it would just be contained within this. But I love these, I think they're so useful. And this one says that it's eco. Um, so it basically says that it is planet friendly and price friendly. And does it say it's made of 95% recycled materials and it's 100% recyclable. Water resistant, reinforced, extra strong, multi uses. <laughs> so I decided to get another A5 size one. And then I got a really big one. I think this is probably like A4 size. I thought this could be useful for protecting sketchbooks and so on when I'm out on location, Just popping them in there, or if I have like a larger array of art supplies that I want to take with me. So if I'm going on holiday, um, the chance would be a fine thing. <laughs> but if I was going on holiday for like a week or something, I want to take lots of art materials in my case, I'd just pop them in there. So that is the end of today's art haul. I think there are lots of exciting things in there. There are lots of different mediums actually, um, lots of different paints and so on. So I'm really excited to swatch them out. That video will be coming up next, hopefully within the next day or two. Um, so yeah, I'll see you on that one and thanks for watching.